happy now to call on Emily Gowdy Kennedy, whose official title is Missioner for Lifelong Christian Formation. You might have noticed an announcement somewhere through COVID tie that it was no longer a much longer title that specified youth, young adults, and college ministry, but now it's everybody, the whole life. Emily, thank you for your work and for tackling um, mission priority number two. Good morning. Bishop Skirving, thank you for this opportunity to speak on mission priority two, which is focused on lifelong Christian formation. In July, I will mark my 12th year of service in this diocese, having spent almost two years in the role of missioner for lifelong Christian formation. It has been a privilege and a joy to serve the people, parishes, and organizations of this diocese. As we seek to gain more understanding about these mission priorities, and through conversations with many of you at your parishes and other people around the diocese, Sometimes we need a little more clarification about exactly what lifelong Christian formation is and what it can be. Some of you may be familiar with the Charter for Lifelong Christian Formation. The Charter was adopted at General Convention in 2009 and serves as the foundation and a springboard for dioceses, congregations, and ministries as they engage in this fundamental work. It says that lifelong Christian formation in the Episcopal Church is lifelong growth in the knowledge, service, and love of God as followers of Christ and informed by scripture, tradition, and reason. The charter also pushes for engagement of all generations in the holistic work of continual growth as faithful Christians. This holistic approach calls us to be intentional about how we structure and support lifelong Christian formation. It asks us to take into consideration learning modalities and context and calls us to value relationship and foster discipleship. But what does all of that mean and how do we do that? Informing, forming, and transforming are the three ways the charter calls us to be intentional in how we structure our formation ministries. To inform means we impart knowledge of the Christian faith so that who we are and how we live is shaped and influenced by what we know. To form means we nurture people's identity and lifestyle as disciples of Christ. And to transform means we promote the personal and social transformation of the world according to the kingdom of God that Jesus preached. In order to inform, form, and transform, we must create spaces, places, and ways where God invites all people into a life of prayer, service, education, and worship, where God inspires all people to experience their faith journey through the lens of worship, scripture, reason, and tradition, and where God transforms all people to live their baptismal promises, serving, witnessing, empowering, and holding all accountable. It is important to know and acknowledge this significant and holy work has been ongoing in the Diocese of East Carolina. It didn't just begin with the position on diocesan staff dedicated to lifelong Christian formation. It has been happening in vacation Bible schools, at EFM, and at diocesan youth events. It has been experienced on college campuses, in parish-supported after-school programs, and at summer camp. The people of this diocese have been creating spaces all over the place for God to invite, inspire, and transform people in their parishes and communities for a long time. Over this time, we have seen our parishes and communities change, and coming to grip with the changes of an ongoing pandemic has meant shifting our view of lifelong Christian formation too. But shifting a view can be eye-opening, not mind-closing. In the diet here in East Carolina, while COVID-19 temporarily closed our buildings, it opened portals to online opportunities. Subsequently, we learned we can inform, form, and transform in online and hybrid communities. We have seen that working together and creating ways to expand our connections across the diocese makes space for God to invite, inspire, and transform in ways we never thought possible. Some of the ways we did that as a diocese during COVID and continue to do are amazing. Listening to people around the diocese, we have been able to develop a wide variety of opportunities for children, youth, 
young adults and adults to be in community and learn together. The young people of this, uh, the young people on the East Carolina Youth Council reached out to me in the spring of 2020 following the murders of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. They were seeking a safe place to ask questions about race and racism and what they could do to help. With the support of some excellent youth leaders and clergy, racial healing, becoming an ally, was designed for high schoolers and took place in the summer months of 2020. We were incredibly fortunate to have the Reverend Charles L. Howard, PhD, for this series. He spoke kindly but candidly with our young people about what it was like to live as a black father of children in this country. Chaz is the chaplain and vice president for social equity and community at UPenn. And youth and adult leaders from nine congregations as well as four other dioceses participated in this transforming series. Throughout these unprecedented times, the ECYC has prioritized providing mental health resources in a faith-based context for young people. They have hosted three three-part series on mental health, mental wellness, relationships 101, and finding balance. All of these series were facilitated by a licensed mental health professional with ties to the Episcopal Church. Over the course of all three, 16 parishes participated, some with individual young people and some in hybrid format on Sunday evenings. But this kind of formation just hasn't been for young people. At a diocesan formation leader gathering in early 2021, two parishes began a conversation about a broader adult formation in the diocese. They worked together through the spring and offered Embracing Change to the wider diocese in June. Embracing Change, grounded in the Acts story of Pentecost, was led by parishioners from each of those parishes for the first three weeks. The fourth week was keynoted by formation and evangelism faculty from Virginia Theological Seminary. Reviews from that class led to the development of a second class, Holy Lent. That five-week class was just this past Lent and led up to Holy Week and was kicked off by the Reverend J. Cy Botham, founder and senior consultant for Renewal Works. Formation for and by children has happened too. As the summer of 2021 loomed, I kept hearing how burnt out many of our formation leaders were, having taken on additional roles at the height of the pandemic. Inviting several in an initial email, 11 congregations from all five of our deaneries worked together to create a collaborative VBS. Using Compassion Camp from Illustrated Ministry, video components of each part of the program were made and posted by day on the diocesan website. And now any congregation in our diocese can use this VBS program with children ages five to 11. And in 2020, our diocese was the first to publicly invite only children to participate in Advent Word, the online global Advent calendar Second through fifth graders from 15 congregations and all five of our deaneries wrote reflections and chose images for the words assigned for each day. Connection has been important for us all, but in particular for those who are part of our campus ministries. College students have experienced a lot of stress and strain shifting on and off campus during the pandemic. Using the way of love to teach a rule of life, students from The Well in Greenville and Echo in Wilmington were invited to participate together in Zoom sessions over the course of the 2021-2022 year. The program, called Measure and Mean, was partially funded by a grant from the Episcopal Church. It culminated in a retreat in April, and I can think of no better place to practice, to focus on the practice of rest than Trinity Center. As a diocese, we are becoming experts at joining each other from all corners and from all size parishes on Zoom or in hybrid formats. The wonderful thing about this is that just about anyone can participate. In fact, in January, five clergy accepted the invitation to lead hybrid or completely Zoom weekly Bible studies following Forward Movement's The Good Book Club. Over the course of those weeks, adults from 12 parishes gathered in four studies on different days and times reading the first 20 chapters of Exodus together. We have also been better able to connect more effectively in our sharing of resources. Our new website has made accessing curated information and formation resources easier for you. Whether it's time for All Saints or Advent, 
whether there has been a national or global tragedy, or we're offering a training or other events to share, curated Christian formation resource newsletters have been out for quite a while. But the new website houses all of these resources for children, youth, and adults as posts, which makes them easily searchable, which means you no longer have to save that email. All along the way, whether they are programs we have always done or a new initiative, we have learned, tweaked, shared new ideas, and pushed ourselves to structure our programs so they inform, form, and transform. Building on that structure, how are we as a diocese continuing to make space for God to invite, inspire, and transform? On the horizon are formation leader gatherings, and they are getting a reboot this fall. We are planning to offer training in areas leaders have asked for, including how to support LGBTQIA young people and tragedy and disaster mental health training for those who work with children and youth. We will also continue our resource and idea sharing as we pick back up regular meetings, both on Zoom and in person. Also slated to begin in September is diocesan supported confirmation for young people. Confirmation has always been a topic I have received many questions about. However, in the spring of 2021, on the heels of a year of shutdown, those questions really began to pick up. As a result, Bishop Skirving and I began talking. What would it look like for young people around the diocese to have confirmation formation together? How could we best connect young people online and in person? And how could we support parishes of all sizes with solid confirmation formation? And so the idea for diocesan supported confirmation for young people took off. Grounded in current Episcopal theology, CREATE is a confirmation curriculum developed by four veteran Christian formation professionals, including the Reverend Jennifer Gamber, author of My Faith, My Life. Many of you who have taught youth confirmation have likely used it. It is an excellent resource and create is rooted in my faith, my life. Taught by lay, trained lay and ordained catechists, create is primarily online with individual work between Zoom gatherings. It is a 10 session curriculum spread over 20 weeks divided into fall and winter semesters. The first five sessions focus on who we are, covering welcome, baptism, the Bible, history of the church, and what do we believe. The second five sessions take on what we do, focusing on worship, sacraments, spirituality, navigating the church, and mission and ministry. Both semesters end with an overnight in-person retreat, but this opportunity does not leave parishes out. In fact, parish support is key in making it work to its fullest. Each compromand will need a mentor in their home parish, and we hope the local congregation will engage regularly in prayer and celebration of their young people. We are excited to announce that the Reverend Lisa Erdeljohn of St. Philip Southport, Ms. Hannah Hutchins of St. Timothy's Greenville, and Mr. Buddy Payne of St. Peter's by the Sea Swansboro are serving as catechists for this program with support from me. Parish registration is open through June 13th, and I would be more than glad to talk with you in any detail and about any question you might have about this program. We are thrilled to offer this opportunity for young people and to provide an excellent confirmation resource for parishes. As we know, God is always seeking spaces and ways to invite, inspire, and transform in our own lives and in the world. While we have been doing so much of this work together and more collaboratively across our diocese, what ideas or initiatives are you thinking of? Looking into the future, how can we use this simple structure of informing, forming, and transforming to help us grow lifelong and life-wide Christian formation opportunities for all in the Diocese of East Carolina? In closing, again, Bishop Skirving, I am thankful for the opportunity to share how we are engaging in the important work of Mission Priority Two and to ask all of you how we might continue to do this holy work in East Carolina. Please do not hesitate to be in touch with me. I would love to hear from you. I want to hear your ideas, connect you with other parishes to share or engage in collaborative work as we all make space for God to invite, inspire, and transform all people for lifelong ministry in the church. Thank you.
Thank you, Emily.